What's up guys, Vega here from Serpent X Special Forces. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be looking at the ASRock Challenger RX 5700. This is the non-XT variant. Uh, but we're going to tear down the cooler and take a look at the layout of the PCB, how they're cooling things. Uh, one of the main reasons I want to get into it is because the memory temperatures are pretty high. So I want to get a measurement of the thermal pads that they're currently utilizing. Looks like it's one millimeter, but we're going to take a better look. Um, as well as possibly replace the thermal paste. Um, now a gentleman by the name of Jeff did hit me up on YouTube. Wanted to see the internals as well to compare against his RX 5700 XT, which is also an ASRock Challenger. But I'm pretty sure the overall design is going to be about the same. Uh, so I'm either going to be using conductor knot or cryo knot to try to reduce the temperatures of this GPU die. Uh, I do have the nail polish that Steve from Gamers Nexus and many others on forum uh, recommended. There's a certain type of nail polish, I believe, uh, or a certain chemical you want to avoid. But I did grab it because you can use that to protect the transistors around the GPU die in case some liquid metal spills over. So let's get this guy uh, teared down, take a look at the internals. I'm probably going to bring you guys through the GoPro so you can see uh, what I'm seeing as we tear down this card. And uh, talk about uh, my thoughts or performance with this card overall as I've been using it from day to day. Alright guys, let's get started. So, the shroud... Height is about 107 millimeters. Looks like there's a fan connector right here that we need to probably pull off. And these screws on the back, looks like there's only four, but these are not screws, or at least you can't unscrew them from this side. That's what's holding the back plate in. There's a screw here that we're going to have to get access to if we want to take the back plate off. And it also looks like there's no thermal pads whatsoever between the back plate and the PCB, which kind of sucks. Now, currently I'm on call, so if you hear my phone going off, I have to have my phone on just in case an emergency happens and i got to resolve it. So please bear with me. Uh, let's go ahead and get this fan, fan disconnected real quick. Using the iFixit kit, no, they're not a sponsor, but I have not been able to get the gamers nexus toolkit yet all right so with that fan disconnected we can start going for the screws in the back of the gpu uh, of course as has got the void uh, warranty void sticker which is dumb but depends on what country you're in I guess you could say honestly it just looks like these four screws are all that we need to remove that over there now let's double check yeah nothing else is connected no screws no nothing boom that's it very easy so four screws is holding this whole thing together as you can see though look at the spread of the thermal paste I'm glad I'm replacing that um, it looks like it's making good contact with the GPU die. It's copper, got four heat pipes. Looks like they didn't flatten the pipes though. I'm not sure if you can see that. They didn't flatten the pipes. Uh, they just have a, a significant uh, copper plate that those heat pipes sink into. And then they spread it throughout the GPU. But the, uh, the memory is completely separate which is a good thing I mean I I've seen this with uh, the sapphire cards and I believe um, uh, a number of the manufacturers are doing it is where they're syncing the memory completely separate from the GPU die which is good because if you had them all on one plate that would you know obviously impact the GPU temperatures and the GPU temperatures for me at least from what I'm seeing 
is getting really hot. Uh, we got some rubber pads here, which I believe is to stop the noise, which didn't really help too much. Let's see here. So this fan right here was making a lot of noise. Unfortunately, noise. Unfortunately, because ASRock doesn't have the same setup as Sapphire, which I like their fan design. There's three screws in order to remove this fan. And it looks like the wire is tucked in behind here and ties the two together to this one pin out, four pin connection. But if you wanted to remove the fans, you could. How would you replace the wire? See, this is not as good as uh, of a serviceable card as the Sapphire. That's why. I, I advise people to get the Sapphire Pulse or the Nitro or anything like that, especially when you're considering mining with it or even if you're gaming with it because the fans has one screw, it's a pin out, pop it out, boom, you're good to go. And you could just buy the fan separately and bring it in. If you're not familiar with this uh, design, you could wind up uh, messing up your shroud or messing up your fan. So that's the heat sink. Yeah, we could tear it down and go a little bit further, remove the actual cooler from it. Uh, but that's just going to separate the, the fan shroud from the actual cooler. But it's not that thick. It really isn't. Four heat pipes, which is kind of standard. Um, spread throughout. Copper uh, plate. And that's pretty much it. I mean, honestly, the, the reason why probably the Nitro is so good is because they have giant fin stacks. Or much bigger fin stacks than the ASRock does. I mean, for example, the memory... Uh, fin stacks or heat sink that Sapphire has is a lot beefier than this especially since I mean th that's it that's all they get that little bit of airflow right there is all they're getting because these are closed off so the memory is getting hot kind of a unique design but I agree with separating the two and here's the VRMs over here which also has a thermal pad on it. Let's see if we tear it all the way down, what it would look like for the uh, size of the thermal pads. Because I do want to replace these thermal pads eventually. We're probably not going to now, but I'm pretty sure I can guess the size, honestly. But it looks like to get to these screws that are holding these uh, memory and VRM heat sinks, you have to remove the back plate, which does feel like aluminum. I'm not going to guarantee it is, but it does feel like it's aluminum. There we go. So four screws to remove the back plate. And now we can see the back of the PCB. I might take a picture of this and share with everybody. But it's honestly the same same design or same PCB kind of layout that we've seen with the other cards as well. Yep, pretty much the same. I'm not going to spout off numbers pretending that I do know what they mean, but... It's pretty much the same PCB layout that we've seen with every other card. Alright, so this guy is going to go over here. And you can see, by the way, the rubber stoppers. So there's the back plate. Now that we have access to the back of the PCB, we could go for the heat sinks. On the uh, Let's go with the VRMs first. want to be careful because I do not have a thermal pad to replace these yet. Comes right off. 
that looks like a one mil, I want to say. This one right here is from Frozen CPU. This is 0.5. So yeah, I would say one mil thermal pad for the VRMs. And then let's try to look at the memory, which the same four screws right next to the CPU. That's what we're looking for here. Got to be careful not to bend that too much. I could take this off, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to be extra careful. Should be fine, but if you want to be super safe, go ahead and take that off if you're trying to tear down your own card. Honestly, I would recommend it. But this is going to be something that I replace in the future. At least the thermal pads are going to be something I replace in the future. For now, use something plastic to avoid damage as possible. There we go. And there you have it. I just messed up this thermal pad, but it, it's on the outside. We should be all right. The memory modules, the thermal pad for that is one mil, as well as the VRMs is one mil. But the back plate or the thermal pad that you need for the back plate is quite significant. If you can see that, I still stand by my 2.5 mil when I measured that. All right, guys, there you have it. The teardown of the ASRock Challenger RX 5700. Fairly simple, but most of these 5000 series GPUs have been very easy to take apart. Uh, I personally prefer the Sapphire cards, whether it's the Pulse or the Nitro, because of the fan assembly or design that they have. Quick, you know, quick change one screw and a pin out to uh, replace a fan. Uh, the memory on this card is Micron. The uh, heat sink, heat pipes are about 7.8 millimeters. Uh, compared to other cards, which is around 6.5. I forget what the other ones are, but I know one is 6.5. But personally, those cards perform better temperature-wise than uh, what I saw here. ASRock did a great job with this graphics card. I wish the build quality, at least the shroud design, could have been a little bit better. Don't use yellow, because not a lot of systems have yellow in it. But if you don't care about the color or, or aesthetics, then that's perfectly fine. It's a cheaper, uh, it's a card that's on the, the cheaper end. Um, removing everything very straightforward I mean there's four screws to separate the cooler from the PCB there's another four screws on the back plate that once you have the cooler off you're gonna have to access from this side that allows you to remove the back plate unfortunately there's no thermal pads on the back plate um, if you did want to put some I measured it uh, these rubber stoppers uh, basically it's 2.5 millimeter if you want to uh, sink the heat from these memory modules to the back plate you could because these memory modules push out most of their heat towards the back side uh, so you know unlike other manufacturers who use a thermal pad on the back plate ASRock did not if you want to add that you certainly can but the it's very easy to tear down uh, once you get the back plate off and the cooler out of the way you can access the screws that hold the heat sink for the memory and the VRMs which is a total of six more screws and then you can replace whatever you need to. But I'm gonna get this guy cleaned up. I already got the GPU die all set. I just need to clean up the heat sink. And then I'm gonna decide whether I'm gonna use conduct or not or cry or not. But if you got a useful information on this video, guys, please hit the like button. Helps out the channel. Uh, you know, share, subscribe for additional content, all that good jazz that helps me out because uh, I did do a review on this card or overview on this card. Uh, most of my information I've been sharing with the community has been more on the mining side of things. As far as gaming performance of the RX 5700, they're all roughly the same. I would challenge you to check out some of the major tech tubers out there, like uh, you know, Paul's Hardware, Hardware Unbox, uh, Gamers Nexus, so on and so forth. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one, and uh, take care. Have a good weekend.